Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right But he gets in sticky messes just the same He's curious and speaks his mind But trouble's never far behind It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind I'm Paddington Bear! Dear Aunt Lucy, there really is nothing like waking up on a fine spring morning to the sound of birds chirping. <laughs> Although, I must say some of them didn't sound too good this morning. I was determined to find out what was going on. It was the busiest day I had ever known in the Brown household. And I soon found out the reason. You see, it was all because Mrs. Bird's spring cleaning was taking place, and being the helpful bear that I am, I decided to lend a paw. Uh, oh. uh, uh. Hmm. Paddington, what are you doing on the floor? I'm cleaning your springs, Mrs. Bird. At least I was trying to. I'm afraid you've got it wrong, Paddington. Spring cleaning simply means everyone lends a hand, giving the whole house a going over from top to bottom. Then I think it should be called top to bottom cleaning. <laughs> well, I think we've rearranged the living room very nicely. Don't you agree, Mrs Bird? <laughs> a definite improvement. Now, we should go and see how Mr Briggs is doing with the roof repairs. It doesn't look like much of an improvement to me. If this is what happens in the spring, I wouldn't like to see winter cleaning. Sweep it clean, the do-it-yourself chimney sweep kit. We're going out to buy some cleaning supplies. Perhaps I could do some tidying up while you're gone. You can do some dusting if you like. I don't know about chimneys, but this brush is very good for dusting ceilings. I wonder. Mrs Brown didn't say anything about sweeping the chimney, but I'm sure it counts as dusting. Oh dear, I think I should have stuck to cleaning the springs. Limey, better be sure to wash my hair tonight. Right then, almost finished. Huh? What's going on here? Now, I'll just uh, finish it off with this. Right, time for lunch. That's odd. Perhaps there's a bird's nest blocking the chimney.
After sweeping the chimney, great care must be taken when unscrewing the rods, otherwise the brush may become detached and stuck up the chimney. If I were writing an instruction book, I'd tell people things like that at the beginning. What I want to know is how these tools fell off the roof. There's the brush. If I can just reach down and... <clears throat> it's a good thing that chimneys have two ends. It was strange, but Mrs. Bird said Mr. Briggs, the handyman, would be repairing the roof, not working in the garden. Hello. What's all this? <coughs> There's something down there. No! <coughs> oh! Don't go in! There's something nasty up your chimney. Ooh. Careful now. Stay back Ooh. behind me. <coughs> huh? What is it, Mr. Briggs? Something very peculiar. Ah, got it. A boot. A, A boot? boot? <gasps> and some kind of rag. No, it's a hat. I don't like the sound of that. Oh. A marmalade sandwich? Paddington! Help! We've got to get him out. Don't worry, missus. Leave it to me. Hold a bit, Paddington. <laughs> now, don't touch anything, or we'll be spring cleaning for months. I'm sorry, everybody, but Mr. Brown's brush got detached by mistake. Hmm. This here Paddington may have got himself pretty mucky and covered in soot, but I'm willing to wager there ain't a cleaner chimney anywhere. Ah. Or a dirtier bear. That night, I had one of my longest bubble baths ever. Soot sticks to fur even more than marmalade. I was combing it out for days afterwards. But I think I got the last of it. Well, almost. <laughs> Very proud of you, Paddington. Imagine, of all the people in the country, you were chosen to represent Great Britain in the Olympic torch relay. It's a great honour and a wonderful opportunity for me to add a chapter to my book, The World and Its Wonders. Goodbye, Bye, Paddington. Paddington. Good luck. Carry the torch Have for Britain. <laughs> Have fun. Bye. Bye. Mind you don't go leaving any marmalade sandwiches lying around for people to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> of 32 Windsor Gardens? Uh, that's me. My dear sir, thank goodness we've caught you in time. There's been a terrible mistake. An unfortunate clerical error, but all's well that ends well. The letter you received inviting you to participate in the Olympic torch relay was intended for a Mr. P. Windsor of Brown Gardens. Good gracious. That explains it. I thought it was funny choosing a bear to represent Britain. A, a bear? bear? Especially one from Darkest Peru. Darkest Peru? Oh, dear. But where is he? What will Her Majesty say when she sees a bear from Peru representing Great Britain? We have to catch him! As soon as Mr. Gruber and I arrived in America, we went straight to the outskirts of the city to await the arrival of the torch. Get ready, Mr. Brown. Here it comes. Follow me. I'll lead you right to the next runner. Keep an eye on my jacket, and you won't get lost. Oh, 
Uh, have you seen a bear with a torch? Thank, Thank you. you! Cheerio! Faster, Mr. Wright! Faster! I'm doing my best, Mr. Morton. Everything was going well until... For some strange reason, Mr. Gruber started to go much faster. Wait for me, Mr. Gruber. You're not Mr. Gruber. What are you doing in his jacket? Oh, dear. I hadn't been following Mr. Gruber. I'd been following a jacket. And the wrong one at that. And I was lost. There he is! Whoa! Hold on there! Stop! You've got no right! I didn't know who the two men were or what they wanted, but something told me they were up to no good. However, I had more important things to worry about, like being lost for a start and not knowing where Mr. Gruber was or what to do with the torch. Hey, where are you going with that big candle? <laughs> the Olympic Stadium. Nice coat, buddy. <laughs> And those boots. Hey, wait till Eddie sees this guy. Wait till Eddie sees what? Uh, cool outfit, Eddie. It was a present from my grandma in England. Very sensible. Thanks, man. I don't understand it. Young Mr. Brown was right behind me. Time is ticking. We'll have to head for the stadium and hope he can get there by himself. <laughs> Now hand over that torch. Uh, um, that is to say, uh, I think it's time for us to leave, Mr. Morton. I'm right behind you, Mr. Wright. Here's a bus ticket. Catch the number 112 just outside the mall entrance. It'll take you right to the stadium. Thank you. I'll do the same for you if you ever come to London. <laughs> you can't bring that on this bus! It's no smoking! But it's the Olympic torch. I'm on my way to the stadium to deliver it in time for the opening ceremony. Wow! Well, isn't that the Olympic, the Olympic, Olympic torch? torch? Olympic Never torch, heard really? of an Olympic torch. The Olympic torch? Why didn't you say so? We'll get you! We'll get you! Get him! To the Olympic Stadium, and hurry, please. The freeway's totally blocked with traffic. We'll have to take the back roads. Whoa! Only 15 minutes to go before the official start of the games, and still no sign of the torch. Fate of these Olympic Games rests in the paws <gasps> of one bear. Did I hear something about a bear? Get you there. <gasps> this young bear needs to get to the stadium in less than ten minutes, or the Olympics will be ruined. Hang on, buddy. to represent Great Britain at the Olympics. Here's the proof. This letter states... Oh, no! The torch <laughs> is going out! Oh, no! Holy smoke, it's going out! everyone who helped me today, especially Mr. Morton and Mr. Wright. Without their quick thinking, the Olympic torch might have gone out. How very strange. That 
Mr. Windsor from Brown Gardens looks exactly like a bear. Dear Aunt Lucy, yesterday I bought myself a set of carpentry tools. They seemed very good value at the time, but I soon found out carpentry isn't as easy as it looks. Especially with paws. The do it yourself manual. Oh, yeah. Repairs, repairs, repairs. I'm always having to mend things around here. Delight your family and surprise your friends. Hmm. I wanted to make a magazine rack for Mr. Brown. And when everyone had gone out, I started work. Oh, ouch! What are you doing, Bear? Do it yourself, Mr. Curry. What did you say, Bear? How dare you! Oh, no, Mr. Curry. I didn't mean you should do it yourself. I meant I'm doing it myself. I'm making a magazine rack for Mr. Brown. Will you use all that wood? Oh, yes. It's a very big job, Mr. Curry. Hmm. I have a very big hole and not enough wood to fix it with. So... Tools. Wood. The only thing I need now is a kitchen table on which to work. A kitchen table? Where am I going to get one of those? I don't think Mrs. Bird would like me using hers very much. Ah! Oh! <gasps> Bear, did you say kitchen table? Yes. Well then, I think we can do business. Business? What sort of business, Mr. Curry? I have a kitchen table you may use, and you have this lovely piece of wood that would fix my fence just so. All right, Mr. Curry, it's a deal. Good. Throw in a free magazine rack for me, and we can shake on it. A magazine rack as well? You can't do it yourself without my table, now can you? Hmm. I suppose not. Here we are, Bear. My kitchen, spotless as ever. And that's exactly how I expect to find it when I get back. Certainly, Mr. Curry. Carpenters always clean up after themselves. Well, they had better. It's two o'clock now. I shall be back precisely at four. Spotless, Bear. Spotless. Step one. Mark out the shape of the magazine rack with a pencil and ruler. That's easy enough. I can do two at the same time. Step two. Saw carefully around the outline of the rack. Mm, I think I'd better cut the sheet of wood in half first. By following the instructions in my do-it-yourself manual, things went like clockwork. Ooh. Although sawing through the wood took rather longer than I expected. Goodness! What on earth do you think Mr Curry's up to now? Whatever he's doing, it doesn't sound very successful. I looked for a chapter on what to do when you've sawed a table in half by mistake. But there was nothing to help me. I suppose that's what's meant by do it yourself. Which is exactly what I decided to do. Now for the finishing touch. There's nothing like marmalade for filling cracks and getting you out of trouble. All I have to do now is stop it wobbling. <laughs> I'm glad I don't work in a table factory. Phew, imagine doing this for a living. You can picture my surprise when I discovered... Ah, 
Oh dear. But Mr. Curry's table was now bear-sized. Delight your family and surprise your friends. Whoever wrote this book can't have met Mr. Curry. After I'd finished making Mr. Brown's magazine rack, I had another setback. There was no wood left for Mr. Curry's, except the piece I'd promised him for his fence. Then I had another idea. I wonder where Paddington's got to. Paddington, what have you got there? It's a magazine rack, Mrs. Bird. Where did you get it? I did it myself, Mrs. Brown. Mr. Curry let me use his kitchen table, so I made one for him as well. Mm. I expect he had a big surprise when he saw it. Oh, what have you done, Bear? Oh, oh, oh I get my hands on you. I... I had used the spare pieces of Mr. Curry's kitchen table legs for the magazine rack, as I'd promised him my last piece of wood for his fence. It seems to me, Paddington, the way you tell it, Mr. Curry got what was coming to him, trying to take advantage of a young bear like that. I'm sure you're right, Mrs. Bird, but I'm not sure Mr. Curry would agree with you. Do you think if I gave him my carpentry set, he might feel better? He likes getting something for nothing. Paddington, that's the first good idea I've heard all day. Trust you to hit the nail on the head? That'll be another first, Mrs. Bird. My plan worked. When I offered Mr. Curry my carpentry set, he seemed to calm down. But it didn't last very long, so it was a good job he still hadn't mended the hole in his fence. <laughs> <laughs>